Welcome to uh, Gilberties here. Uh, yes, Christopher James with Taylor Reed. Hey. Now, you've but been good a... to finally meet you. Buddy. Oh yeah, I've been hearing a lot of great you... things about you for years as well. Well, thanks a lot. You know, I don't know if you know this, but your show was the very first show I ever saw in Branson. Cool. You were at the um, the theater by the Branson Walmart there. Absolutely, yeah, the Branson Mall back in the day. Yeah, yeah. and the very first night I was here, yeah. somebody from our show at the showboat said, we gotta go see a show, and okay. he thought I would like to go see a magic show, which he okay. doesn't realize that I don't wanna watch it on my time off. <laughs> <laughs> and so I uh, came out, and we saw yeah. your show with the poodles. And... Yeah, and all that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of retired the poodles now, but I had the standard poodles in the show for a long time. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. just, you had them not that long ago when I yeah, saw Yeah, I that. still have some poodles, but I've just decided to kind of let them, you know, because they're getting, one of them's getting really old. Uh -huh. and we had another one that passed away here a while back. He was my best uh, performing dog. So I thought, your, best, eh. your best poodle. Yeah. So I thought, <laughs> well, I'm just going to kind of ease back from the the animal bit. You know? Right. Well, you yeah. let them free. Like I heard of somebody else around here that let their tigers go yeah. to a sanctuary. So you yeah. let the poodles run free. I'm just going to let them hang out in my house. Be my wild. wife's a big fan of animals. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about your background a little bit. And I've, okay. I've researched you a little bit. And okay. I know that you uh, were a drummer. Okay. Yes. Right. right. And uh, you were doing that for quite a while. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. And you were from Vegas. Like mm -hmm. you were living in Vegas mm -hmm. for a while. For a long time. For yeah. long, how long yeah. did you live in Vegas? In Vegas for 15 years. 15 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. And I started as a, uh, I started off in Texas, if you want to go kind of back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Started off as a child, about four or five years old, Christmas tree is kind of where the magic kit started from. But I was also into playing drums because my father was a kind of a music teacher. He taught drums, piano, guitar, sax. He was kind of pretty good at every instrument, but not great at any of them. Just right. good, good enough to teach children how to play. In this he could have time. his own show. There you, yeah. go. there you go. So he kind of taught me the basic beats on a drum, and I kind of played drums for many years with my, my father's band. He is a hobbyist player, performer, and he made most of his money, and the real job was in real estate, mm -hmm. but he loved the arts. So I was a drummer my whole life, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I moved to Vegas in 1986 to be a magic star, hopefully. That was my dream. <laughs> And of course, that didn't pan out as well as I wanted. But my yeah. father said, you may want to take your drum set as a backup plan. Right. And I think it was two weeks into Vegas, I was already playing all the lounges in Vegas. Yeah. Making like 500 a week as a 19-year-old. And I was pretty happy. I mean, that was not bad money at a 19-year-old kid. And I was kind of enjoying the moment as being a drummer, an entertainer, kind of uh -huh. singing background in bands. Yeah. And a lot of girlfriends, they like musicians more than magicians, by the way. That was... Pretty fun. Yeah, good I think times. that's pretty standard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, kind yeah. of good times. But my real passion is magic, though. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I finally said, I'm going to just give the drums up. No more singing and playing drums. 100% magic or nothing. So. Right. But you had the stereotypical getting a magic kit as a kid. Absolutely. Sort of that's kind of where it started for me. Yeah. It seems to be the story for most, You right? would think. It, yeah. It's not for me. No? Like, no, no. Yeah. Well, I did tricks when I was younger, but yeah. it was, I got a little bit older and saw some people doing tricks and yeah. people really liked it and i'm like huh well i think okay. i could i think uh, i could do that and, yeah you know so gave it a shot but a lot of practice now when you got started uh when you were still in texas mm -hmm. did you do the whole birthday circuit oh absolutely that? i started off doing like mcdonald's actually when the one of the first mcdonald's that ever hit texas i was the little birthday party magic guy in the back oh really like and when I, they had birthday parties at yeah the McDonald's? or we would just book them that way you know it's kind mm -hmm. of cutting edge stuff back in the day. I'm, I'm way old, you know, so, <laughs> and, uh, we would do magic everywhere from, you know, wedding parties to, you know, birthday parties at people's mm -hmm. homes. And eventually I was fortunate enough because my father was a realtor. He had a lot of little properties, properties around the town. And he decided, why don't we make a little magic check place for people to come see us? And I'm like, Hey, that's cool. Right. Of course, remembering that he's a hobbyist entertainer as well at the time, he's a singer and all. So we set up a little magic theater to where all they'd have to bring is the cake. And oh, the children. I see. So it was kind of fun. It's kind of like a little CC's Pizza thing of the time. Yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, we did like magic birthday parties for like 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. Bring the cake and mm -hmm. we'll give you the show. Yeah. And it was fun because yeah, we were able to give them illusions as opposed to just small tricks because we had our own little, little yeah. place. So know, did your stuff. dad help build all that? Did Absolutely. He, yeah. And uh, he used illusions. it a lot for his, well, he, he used the theater a lot for his, his gig as well. Like he would do big roasts for real estate conventions and they would play their music there and all. So it was kind of a... Uh, I got lucky the fact that he had the entertainment bug, so we both uh -huh. kind of got to live the dream for a long time that yeah. way. Yeah, kind of like your own little magic castle thing. There you on. go. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. that be awesome? 
I, I would love yeah. to do that in Branson, it like was, have a place like that. It was that nice. Be. My mm-hmm. dad's quite the businessman as well. He was able to get Stan Irwin, which was uh, Johnny Carson's personal manager, to fly out and see my show when I was 13. What? And Stan Irwin said, I need to bring a consultant with me, someone that knows magic. So believe it or not, he brought the great Tom Sony with him. Oh, yeah. Which Johnny Thompson. Johnny, yeah. And Johnny Thompson and Stan Irwin came and watched my show when I was about 13. Uh, they were semi-impressed. I don't know how impressed, but they uh, they kind of wanted to manage me at the time. And for some reason or another, my dad, my father decided against it because it was, I think, a lot of money. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but my, my I think my father said I'll do it if you can get him on the Carson show. Mm. And they couldn't con- they couldn't confirm that. Right, so right. I think he said you were going to pass. <laughs> so how so, old were you when you moved to Vegas then? I moved to Vegas when I was around 19 years old. Oh wow, that's really young to cutting move to Vegas. edge to 20. I was. I moved out there with a friend of mine. I, I had been going out to Vegas most of my life with my father on vacation, my, you know, my mom and dad, and I got to see Siegfried Roy, Copperfield, the Circus Circus, anything magic. Mm-hmm. I was all over it, you know, just loving it. Even though back in the 70s when I was a kid, uh, Vegas was not a good place for children. Right. So we had to wear like pinstripe suits and fake mustaches. Up. It's a, I have some really cool stories. you Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> my dad was such a cool guy to, to hook me up with Siegfried Roy. David Copperfield, he would persistently call their agents and managers and said, hey, I just, my kid's a hobbyist magician. Can he just take a picture with you? Right, and right. they're like, just leave us alone. And he'd say, come on. You know, he'd, you know, he'd cons- he would drive them nuts, and they'd finally say, hey, go if meet the kid. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you leave us alone. Yeah, leave us alone, we'll take a Siegfried picture. would go, you know, Roy, if Taylor Reed comes, uh, kick him out the back door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway, it was a great experience because we got to meet a lot of celebrities and stuff at a young age. Uh-huh. And I'm quite the creator, so I was always kind of like creating magic tricks as a child. Nowadays, we've got all these little wizards on computers. Uh-huh. And in my day, there were, there were no computers. No, nobody had laptops. So I would just create magic on paper. And so when I had the chance to meet Siegfried or Copperfield and these guys, they would say, what, what do you got here? And I would sit and show them all my blueprints. And right, that right, kind right. of intrigued them. So that right. was very interesting at a young age to get to not just meet them, but have them want to continue to be my friend because I had some some goodies here. Yeah, that's kind of good. You know, that it, was kinda, it was kind of And you neat. were there, I remember in the mid to late 80s, right. uh, that's when um, they tried to make it family friendly yeah, in they, Vegas. They, they put tried. in the water parks. And they put a theme park in and I did a thousand shows at the MGM theme park. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder if I saw you. Because we went, during yeah. that time, we went to every show because yeah. they were just trying to attract the kids and <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah. But so. as you were saying, it's changed so much with the internet and stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about a little bit, because you've been okay. through that whole thing. You and I were just talking yeah. about technology and stuff. Absolutely. So uh, we'll talk about that in okay. just a couple minutes. Cool. This is Christopher James with Taylor Reed, and we'll be back in a minute. Cool. Thanks. Thank you for supporting All Things Branson. Be sure to subscribe and stay in touch on Facebook and Twitter. Christopher James back here with Taylor Reed hey. in Branson, Missouri. And you've had a lot of luck with um, reality shows. That's kind yeah, of changed I, some things for you. Technology, internet. I kind of want to absolutely. talk about all that. So yeah. tell me about, so you went to, uh, you moved from Vegas to Branson. Mm-hmm. You were here for a while. And yeah. then suddenly you're on uh, America's Got Talent. Absolutely. How did that go down? How Did they contact you? Yeah, they contacted me. They started contacting me every season. As soon as I hit town, believe it or not, shortly thereafter, I think the first, the TV show came on. I think that's the one that Nathan Burton was on. Mm-hmm. They started contacting me. And it just didn't kind of work out until a few years later. I finally got to go to Tampa, Florida. Right. They had been, uh, I don't, I think they go searching for entertainers in Branson, LA, yeah. Vegas. They've contacted places. me. Yeah, it, so, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they came one time to Branson and did a cattle call, everything from yeah. the Duttons and beyond. Everybody went to a big convention room and, uh-huh. and I went there as well. So that, that's the first time they saw me. And then uh, anyway, it eventually evolved what I got to do with the TV show. And it was, it was really a, an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. It well, really what helped What was me. it like? Um, did they try to manage you? It, my, mm-hmm. my experience, which I'll just touch on really quick, mm-hmm. was they contacted me. They liked the right. look of things that I did. Right. But then they approached me with ideas of different types of mm-hmm. routines they wanted me to do. And right. it didn't fit my style. And so I backed out of it because it made me yeah. uncomfortable but to did be, they try to do that well with you? to be honest with you i i don't think they like me too well because <laughs> i went to a meeting uh it, it's a long drawn out story actually i actually originally did uh, a tv show with them in dallas texas i think the year was 2008 i went to dallas texas with a couple of illusions that they dictated 
Mm -hmm. They're like, you can either do the head spin trick or the trick where the girl gets little. Yeah, well, you and I would know that's twister or compress, but right. they don't know what it's called. Yeah. So they dictated what tricks I did. And I called my friend Nathan Burton in Vegas and I said, what do you suggest? You're the master of this stuff. And he says, he says, do as much as you can do, as fast as you can do it. And sl basically slam it down their throat because da, 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 you know, that they've seen all this stuff before, basically, right. you know. So uh, I told them I will go ahead and do the compress, which is little bitty. You know, I call it little bitty. Mm -hmm. And they said, you can either go to Dallas, Texas, or you can go to Chicago. And I, I decided to go to Dallas because I'm a Texan, and, and that's my Texas routine. Right, right. In my show, I do a lot of variety, but that's a little Texas number. I'm yeah, not a number. huge fan of country music, but it's a little, it's my little redneck bit. <laughs> and I went to Texas and did that, and I went ahead and threw another illusion in the mix called the Bits and Pieces. So I did Bang and Bang like Nathan, mm -hmm. and this is back when Pyrrhus was in it, uh, Sharon Osbourne and Howie. Okay. Long story short, I didn't make airtime. I wasted a lot of time, energy, money, in rehearsing, et cetera. Right. So years later, when they kept approaching me to be on the show again, I'm like, I kind of had a bad taste because I'm like, I didn't even make airtime. And I said, so here's the deal. They said, they said you're already going to be on the show, guaranteed. Meet us in St. Louis for a meeting. I said, I'm not coming to impress you. They said, no, we already, we, you're on. Yeah. You don't have to impress us. Just come meet with us. And I said, okay. So I went to St. Louis. I don't know how much of this I should tell. But I basically, when I went to St. Louis, I basically told them, if you want me on the show, I'm doing the appearing motorcycle. Otherwise, lose my number. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they said, well, we think you should do that later because that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, there are no guarantees that. in this life. Yeah, right. I'm doing it the first time or I'm not doing it at all. Uh -huh. So I kind of had, they said, you're giving us an ultimatum. I said, kind of. Yeah. I said, if you want me on motorcycle, if you don't, no worries. I'm going back to Branson. Yeah, that's exactly I what I did. I just told them. Mm -hmm. And actually, I got to do the, uh, uh, the motorcycle, which is my original effect. And honestly, I think all artists do that show. They're kind of using the show. The show's kind of using them. Right. It's like I was doing it for the exposure, obviously. I was doing it to showcase my new illusion for my magicians worldwide because I sell that illusion to magicians worldwide right. as well. So I figured like if, a I get a, if I get a TV commercial of this for magicians, it's already a win. Mm -hmm. Now, if I also do good, like a thumbs up from all judges, then it's going to be good for Branson, which it actually was. But however, I kind of told them what, how it was going to be. And I took the chance. And they could have said, you know, you're not going to be on the show. And I said, no worries. I'm going home. Yeah, my, that's kind of what they did to me. Gig. I didn't have to meet them in person, but we did um, calls, conference calls. Right on. And so they would say, well, we watched this YouTube video that you sent. Will you watch these ones? And can you do this guy's act? Yeah. And, and I didn't want anything to do with that. And, yeah. And they said, well, we like this illusion that this guy has, but we don't like his look mm -hmm. or his his personality. Can you do this? Right on. And it just made me uncomfortable. So eventually I did what you did where they yeah. said, uh, well, you need to let us know what's going on. And I said, well, I don't need mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. they said, but think of the exposure. And I said, I have a job. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, there you go. You know, well, I don't you know, need it, this. It's a tough show because uh, this was later into the show. Like, I can't remember what year, 8, 9, 10, 11, 2011, 2012-ish, I can't remember. Mm hmm a few years after 2008, which, which I did Dallas, Texas with no airtime, right. they had improved the situation. And, but they've also seen everything. Yeah. And nothing impresses they're them. They're jaded now. And so they're like, hey, you know, Taylor, we've seen trains, planes, and automobiles appear on this show. What makes you, th ma what makes us, or you think that the, uh, a motorcycle is going to be impressive? Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, a buddy of mine uh, was on the show about a year ago as a special guest star. I don't know if you remember David Copperfield. And mm -hmm. they go, yeah. And I go, he came on and made a motorcycle appear in a paper box. And they go, yeah. And I said, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? And they go, yeah. And I said, well, my thing, in my opinion's even kind of cooler because it's a new concept. It's right. kind of like see-through and magically different. Yeah, yeah. So I did it. I got lucky. I kind of got my way getting on the show. But after I got on the show, it was complete dictation from them. Yeah. I, I, they took me in the corner like Bon Jovi. I swear, 3,000 people on their feet, Tampa, Florida. I was in a real high moment. It was like Rocky in the movie. And the producer said, come back here with me in the hallways. And I was, I was trying to enjoy this moment. Uh -huh. But they're like, come back here with me. And we went back in the back hallways. And they said, what are you going to do in Vegas? And I said, I've got that all figured out. And I told them my concept of my, my vision, which I wanted to actually do a routine with my daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter at the time was four or five. 
but we were going to do a sweetheart moment where she just came out and you hear her cute little voice. And then I was going to levitate my daughter. Right. So it was going to show that I'm a real person. It was going to show the Danny Gans type feel, you know, mm -hmm. he was the star in, in Vegas that passed away early, but he was a very, a great entertainer. It was going to show that moment where the guy can entertain and it's kind of sentimental. And then I was going to go to the live television with some of the bigger effects, like right. appearing NASCARs and some of that. But they vetoed that. They said, you cannot and will not do your daughter, so that's too small. They said, when you go to Vegas, you must go big or go home. Yeah. But and see, that so, hasn't worked out because the, the latest winners and stuff are doing the small stuff now. So it really disappointed me that I was forced to do either an appearing horse or helicopter. Yeah. They, they asked me what effects that I could bring to the table. I, they wanted to know five options for Vegas, and they picked the one. And, and at the last minute, about three days before shoot time, they changed it to another one. Yeah. It puts you under an extreme amount of pressure. I know. People think it's a talent competition. It is not a talent competition It's a television show. It's a television <laughs> show where they get f basically uh, unpaid entertainers. To, yeah. <laughs> it's a very and cheap And also, as you show. know, as an artist, uh, I think a guy like me, even though the real world would think that we want to go and go and go and go and go to the end, you, as an artist, you're better off just doing a little bit and going home. That's what all my friends say. Don't then, make it to the top Because then they don't own you. Right. But if you get to the very end, they actually own your career, mm -hmm. a percentage of your income, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, for so, a very, very long time. As, as they say, we got the T-shirt to prove it, right, yeah. that we did it. You know, <laughs> yeah, we've right. got all the video footage that we play live in Branson on the screens and yeah, yeah. Howard Stern and all that stuff, the reactions, Sharon Osbourne. Mm -hmm. One last thing, I had a gig here in town where an old producer guy says, I don't even know if you're, who are you? And I said, I'm Taylor Reed. And he goes, well, what makes you think, we think you're even big? And he's being kind of smart with me. And I'm like, I don't know. Watch this. And I pushed play on, on YouTube. Uh -huh. And it was my appearing motorcycle routine. And Sharon Osbourne goes, it was big. It was special. It was fantastic. Or whatever. And then when it was over, I turned and I said, is that big enough for you? And he says, all right, you got the job. And he shook my hand. Yeah, so right, right. One of those old grabby guys. You oh, know, I know. I had with. a guy last night at the show that uh, was a producer for Mark Wilson. Yeah. His old Magic Circus. Nice. Or whatever it was called. And uh, same type of deal. Yeah. So, but... You never know. Times have changed, yeah. and reality shows have changed a lot, but the internet is changing magic, I yeah. think, uh, a lot. And yeah. Not in a good way, I think. Yeah. It's... And uh, maybe we'll talk about that real quick here okay. when we come back. I'm Christopher James with Taylor Reed here in Branson, Missouri, and we'll be right back. Thank you for supporting All Things Branson. Be sure to subscribe and stay in touch on Facebook and Twitter. Here at uh, Gilberti's. Yes. Come out, check out the pizza and stuff. One of my favorite pizza. restaurants, by the way. Yes, I love Sue it. Sue and Wayne Gilberti are my buddies. Yeah, we might see them here in a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk to you real quick about uh, the internet. We were talking about reality shows, and yeah. I know you were telling me that you have something else going on here shortly, working yeah. on another reality show. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, any hints or anything? Yeah, we're excited about that. My wife and my two kids and myself are going to Hollywood for nine days to do this new TV project, and they won't let us talk about what it is yet. You know, uh -huh. they make you sign contracts and stuff, but it's oh, going to yeah. be on television, I think, in spring break area of next season. Oh, and that's going to be fantastic. And Good then for advertising I, for here. Yeah, and I'm thinking I may do a guest spot at the Hollywood Magic Castle while I'm there. Yeah. That'll be fun. Oh, that's that's, that's fun. you got world-class guys from around uh -huh. the world. Yeah. yeah, I've done it several times. Yeah. Have you been? Have yeah. you performed oh, there yeah. before? Oh, yeah. I've been there before, but I never performed there, so. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of work, and it's, yeah. uh, but it's fun. You meet yeah. all kinds of interesting people, because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. We were kind of talking about that. And uh, the night I was there, Hayden Christensen and, yeah. and Natalie Portman, they all came in. Awesome. And that was that was. You know who came cool. to see me at the Branson Mall, speaking of the mall years ago, was Neil Patrick Harris, actually. Oh, yeah. And he's big time behind the whole magic scene out in, in mm -hmm. Hollywood. He's the president of the Magic Castle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So he saw cool. my show at Branson Mall, and I about passed out. We <laughs> comped him in. They said, can, uh, can Neil... Harris come to your show with about seven comps. And I told my wife, I bet that's Neil Patrick Harris. She goes, uh -huh. no way. I go, yes way. Uh -huh. And of course, we took him backstage and gave him all kinds of gifts and stuff. You're like Siegfried. You're like, yeah. if he comes in, just get him out the back you door. You know, Roy, <laughs> give him magic kits and bouquets of flowers. Of <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But I wanted to talk about the internet because um, uh, I know you uh, were in on the internet when the, mm -hmm. it was first starting. You're very much into multimedia yeah. and stuff, as was I. I had a big write-up in mm -hmm. uh, Newsweek about being one of the first e-commerce sites when people were saying, will people buy things over the internet? And boy, right. you know, they were doubting that mm -hmm. we would be successful at that. Yeah. But it has changed magic it so has. much because yeah. just like with the reality shows, 
it seems like everybody has seen everything. Yeah. And whenever I post videos, I love to post videos. Mm -hmm. I love to try things out and post them on there with different characters. Right. One thing I hate is on YouTube, I'll post a, uh, let's say, restored soda can mm -hmm. routine. Right but on. I do it in my own way as a redneck. And right below that will be how to do the restored right. Uh, right you know, soda can. Yeah, it's and just... it's right there. And it just makes magic so difficult. Oh, absolutely. So do you post a lot on YouTube? I try not to post my N1 numbers, which you and I know what that is. An mm -hmm. N1 to the lay public would be the smaller numbers in front of the main curtain, right. the small tricks. But those are my favorite illusions to do, actually. My whole show, I feel like, is, is held together with the glue of the N1 numbers, from right. newspaper tears to Nesta boxes and mm -hmm. all the small bits. In Card fact, manipulations yeah, and stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely my favorite kind of magic. And I think that's what makes a true magician, actually, is the sleight of hand close-up and N1 bits, comedy, timing. Yeah. And I'm very gun-shy, as you would say, or we would say, about putting on my my a material on youtube right i put all my box stuff on youtube and i think if they steal that or they copy that i don't care everybody's doing that anyway yeah but here's the problem with that is that it's not cheap yeah it's it, not so it's not like somebody in there you know doing a birthday party can right buy on. the uh yeah helicopter appearance or right. motorcycle yeah but you know it's just terrible because in some ways as an artist it's good and bad uh, like with your i haven't seen the act you're talking about but let's just say you do the redneck can type of thing mm-hmm not only will somebody show how it works, maybe, but someone else is going to be doing your redneck act, that happened. which is just not nice at that all. Exactly. <laughs> that exact thing happened to you know? me this past year is I've been doing it for years. Yeah. And, and one good thing about YouTube is I have it um, chronicled on Docu there that I've been doing it for like four years. There you go. And I actually have the name Redneck Magician, mm -hmm. uh, copyright, trademarked. Right on. And I did all of that when I started. And yeah. uh, I had somebody start posting as the redneck oh, magician yeah. just, and doing the same routines and stuff. But I had this terrible. on record. So my, yeah. my attorney told me, wait till they're, wait to yeah. see if they're successful and then mm -hmm. get their money. There you so, go. <laughs> well, you know how it is. I mean, magic's truly operated on ethics and you either have it or you don't. Most, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't. They and, don't. you know, as soon as I did AGT with the motorcycle, uh, a guy in Europe knocked it off. Yeah. He built one. And they put it on Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. And I got uh, on the guy on Facebook, really got up in his business on private messages. And he told me, Simon Cowell made me do it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I believe that or not. But mm. Simon Cowell does own an AGT as well. Right, So right. then it makes me think, were they videotaping my prop backstage when I was in the dressing room? You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, kind yeah. of like makes you wonder. Yeah, and that's a huge problem in magic. And my pet peeve mm -hmm. is I've heard you say in other podcasts, it's not about yeah. the tricks. No. And it's about the presentation. presentation. And it's about your personality and connecting with the audience. Absolutely. And so many magicians, and I had a major issue with this. Mm -hmm. I had somebody that was close to me see my show and Branson mm -hmm. many times. Right. Many, many times. Mm -hmm. And then I found out they won an award at a competition, which I don't do competitions right anymore. And I happened to see a videotape and it was my act from beginning to end. That's, same jokes, yeah. same routines. His justification was, well, you're doing, you're using gimmicks that you can buy, but mm -hmm. it was all my presentation. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was weird that you did the same three yeah. routines, you yeah. know? Yeah. But, presentation's more important than the prop. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, because yeah. that's the artist. The presentation is the entertainer and the trick is the trick. Right. 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 Yeah. The trick like, means nothing in a way. Yeah. You get it in the right hands and it becomes a... Like, a, like with a, a musical instrument. Thing. Absolutely. You know, you can own yeah. the best piano, but if yeah. you can't Play engage it. the audience yeah. there. So I'm a big fan of presentation, performance, comedy, all the stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But what do you think? Um, I think the internet has created these these stars uh, that are just momentary yeah. in that uh, I was listening to a musician talk about it and you used to have to go and practice and audition mm -hmm. and work on everything. But now with YouTube, right on. if you have one decent trick, mm -hmm. you can get millions of followers. Yeah, it's and absolutely crazy. Everything else you do is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> After yeah. That. yeah, I mean, I guess what everybody's hoping and praying for these days is to go viral. Which yeah. that sounds like a negative thing, but in the internet world, that's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Rick Marcelli, Hollywood manager that used to be for Copperfield, he says today the best way to become famous, because people sit, used to ask him, how do you become famous? And back in the day, it used to be Johnny Carson show. Remember in the day? Yeah. If you were on the Carson show back in those days, you, the next morning you were a superstar. Right. Nowadays, there's so many hundreds of thousands of television. You know, there, there's so many TV shows. If you're on one TV show... It's not like being on the Carson show back exactly. in the day. And so he said, truly, the way to become a star today is truly uh, YouTube. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. kind of true in a way, because if you get, I, I haven't been so blessed yet to get a viral type hit. Viral. 
mm-hmm. but if you not do online, but <laughs> online yeah <laughs> but if you do i'm told it's a beautiful thing That's, yeah some of my friends have been fortunate enough to have that happen yeah i mean that would be great and all but uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. of course it would be to wake up one morning and have millions and millions yeah. of hits and i i heard a comedian one time he was a disabled comedian has mm-hmm. cerebral palsy and somehow his video a clip of it was shown on ellen or mm-hmm. oprah or something right. he was out on vacation when he Woke mm-hmm. up one day, he had 10 million hits. Unbelievable. And it's yeah. just crazy overnight. Yeah. But you have to be able to capitalize on that. It yeah. doesn't do any good. To... Yeah. And then you got to have the goods to back it up. I mean, if you got one good routine and you don't have a two hour show or a one hour show, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I used to have a magic school in yeah. Ohio, but my rule was I only took on two or three students at a time. Right. And my f- most famous story was I had a guy, I had met him, a kid at a blue and gold banquet. Mm-hmm. And I was very reluctant, but he seemed like he would really work at it. Showed him a simple little uh, matrix and right a couple up. other things. Two weeks of lessons. The mm-hmm. third week he came in and said he had to leave early because he had showed me his new business card his dad mm-hmm. got him and that he was going to do a birthday party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the wow. third week of lessons. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> because he had watched videos online. On YouTube and, and stuff, yeah. And he knew what he was doing. But, yeah, there's but so I much, think it's yeah. changed so much. But for the good, too. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's made Magic more popular, but a lot of the new shows out, Mm -hmm. I think Penn and Teller's new show Mm -hmm. is fantastic for showing talent. Yeah, it's it's definitely a better show for presenting talent. Mm -hmm. And I I was talking to their producers a while back as well. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to that show. I'm hoping to do that eventually. Yeah. I've got a new illusion that I'm working on that's so cool, I think that it would be worthy of that show. Appearing Bicycle. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just not. keep going back in time. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually a new levitation that's quite interesting. Oh. I invented a new levitation where you float a person from the audience up, but it can be done 360, surrounded, mm-hmm. with people standing very close to it, and no one can see how it works. Most interesting. And it's something I've been working on for two years, and if I can finish the goal, it's not completed yet, I think it would be worthy of that television show, because that they like fun. stuff that's... They love a lot of slot of hand as well, but I think if they're going to watch an illusion, it's going to have to be something that's really going to have them scratch their head. Yeah, yeah. Because they've seen it all. Oh, they have. And they're they great have. guys, by the way. I used to watch the. I used to watch them rehearse in Vegas. That oh, was yeah? a very special moment to get to go in and watch these guys kind of work behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, I just took a lot of mental notes of how polished these guys are. Yeah, very, yeah. very. Well, their show's really popular right now. Yeah. But you do a lot of inventing, and when I come back, I want to talk to you real quick. Okay. about uh, inventing magic and copywriting magic. Okay. So we'll be right back with Taylor Reed. Thanks. Thank you for supporting All Things Branson. Be sure to subscribe and stay in touch on Facebook and Twitter. Hi, this is Christopher James, back with Taylor Reed here in Branson, Missouri. Yeah. And previously we were talking about how you have done some inventing in magic. Yes. And that's a little bit of a problem because a weird thing about magic that uh, a lot of people don't understand is that it's very difficult to copyright That's your correct. show and your mm-hmm. tricks that you do. You can yeah. copyright, correct me if I'm wrong, but you mm-hmm. can trademark or copyright a gimmick, right. like the mechanics. Mm-hmm. But if I use that in a show, I can't copyright that show. Is that yeah. pretty much how you it know, is? You know, I don't know all the copyright rules. I do know that uh, if it's mechanically inclined, if there's moving parts and stuff like a motor, then you can get what's called a mechanics uh, patent, mm-hmm. which are very expensive apparently. Then there's a thing called the design patent, which is cheaper and more, more people get them. Like if you draw a sketch of how a box is going to look, it's called the design. Right. So if someone copies that design, then they've infringed on your deal. Right, right. Uh, the only way, they can always change it though. Like if you drew a zigzag, like if a zigzag were your original, mm-hmm. and you said, that's, I want a uh, design patent for that, and you get it. Someone could just draw a picture with curved edges, oh, and, and it's it no longer different. the same design. Yeah. So, I kind of feel like that in magic, it still goes back to ethics. Mm-hmm. You can either be trusted or you can't, and yeah. and and that's why the magic cafe and those kind of places are great because when someone's a thief, you can go tell the magicians about it. And Joe Blow is a big thief. Check this out. Right, right. And that's kind of what we do, as you know. I mean, that's all you kind of can do is if someone steals from you, go complain about it to all of our, our magicians. Get the word out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's they're not ever going to handcuff them, but maybe, you know, they, Humiliate may, look, them. they may look stupid, you know, because <laughs> yeah. they are. But <laughs> here in Branson, though, one thing that I noticed when I came here and talking to comedians, other entertainers, is that that's kind of common here. Yeah. Uh, 
maybe not with what mm-hmm. you and I do because it's a little yeah. bit more difficult sometimes. Right. Yeah. We what, what is more common practice. is just people um, stealing stuff, stealing or? jokes, lines. Uh, yeah. If if a certain song in a show is doing well or a, a set mm-hmm. a routine, they'll put it in other shows. Absolutely, it just it's very it's a common. Disheartening. Branson. I've gone to a lot of shows in Branson, and I've got to where I don't want to go to Branson shows anymore. I've been Me here too. 10 years, mm-hmm. and I, I don't ever go to Branson shows anymore. But it seems to me, and I don't want to down Branson because I love Branson and it is my town, but I, I bet there's five or six shows that almost have the same show. Yeah. I mean, you could there's these variety shows that you know I'm talking about. Yeah. They have a lot of singers, and they all close with you know, the God Bless America thing, or they do this, and they open, and then they do, they do you know, mm-hmm. I Feel Good, or it's the same show, yeah. just a different name. Yeah. And that's a bummer for me, because in Las Vegas, that did not happen. Right. That's and what so I try to tell people, that if I'm you were in Vegas to, or New York or L.A., this would I want to raise happen. the standards of Branson. You know, I know that sounds kind of mean, but I mean, uh, I, well. I, I think that there's more to Branson than country western music. I love country music. For mm-hmm. a few minutes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's time to do some magic or something more modern, something a little you know? different, appeal to a wider range. Yeah, because there's a younger group coming out here now. Yeah, well, I think those shows, it's not their fault that yeah. they're they're doing that. It's they're playing it safe. They know yeah. that that format works yeah. with the people that, that we've traditionally got. But Branson is evolving yeah. to a lot of younger families right on. and uh, they want a variety. You can only go see so many shows mm-hmm. that are tributes to... Yeah. To different periods. It's of time. funny about YouTube and the magic tricks, though. Like, even some of my big illusions on YouTube, I, I, even though I'm an older guy, I'm getting older here, I still, my wife's younger. She likes to help me pick kind of modern contemporary music. Mm-hmm. So well, she's we, in high school. So yeah, she she's knows. still in high school. No, I'm <laughs> but we have an illusion called Eclipse, which you've heard of, I'm sure. And it's, it's a really great tune. I don't know who, who sings it, but it's so modern Mm -hmm. that my young friends in Hollywood, you know, like 18, 19, 30 years, you know, younger than me will say, Hey Taylor, can I please use that tune in my show? I don't have an eclipse, but I want to use it for the sub trunk. Uh And I'm like, yeah, who cares? You know, if they, if they ask you where you got it from, just tell them Taylor Reed told you. Yeah. You know, and so at least they can do is just say Taylor was the guy that influenced me, you know? Yeah. Cause I mean, cause if you don't like let them do it, they're going to do it anyway. Exactly. And And so, you know, Copperfield had his shows on TV. That was great. When they would be on that, everybody would watch him. We'd talk about him in school the next day, but every song that he would use would be in somebody's act in the next week. Absolutely. All the time. Yeah. So, but that is true uh, because I used to do conventions. Mm-hmm. And I would always pride myself on doing something completely unusual that mm-hmm. they don't expect. You've been to conventions, right. and usually when they have the big finale shows, the most right. popular act is mm-hmm. the juggler mm-hmm. or somebody that doesn't do magic. Right. That's who everybody raves about. Right. So I would try to make mine different. And I had a guy one time ask, where can I buy that routine? I said, well, mm-hmm. I made it. Mm-hmm. Well, where can I buy it? Mm-hmm. Well, you can't buy it. I, mm-hmm. I made it. Yeah. Where did you get your props? And I said, mm-hmm. sure, I, I made it. He said, well, you tell me. Or I'm just going to make them myself and uh, <laughs> do it's, it. It's just so, absolutely, people are terrible, crazy. aren't they? Yeah. It's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah. Why would you want to be a cover band? That's what mm-hmm. I call some of those shows. They're right cover on. band shows. Yeah. But Branson itself has gone through a surge of variety acts, mm-hmm. uh, not just magic. But yeah. uh, you and I were talking a little while ago about some of the big acts. I think it's good yeah. for Branson because there's yeah. such a variety. When you first came here, though... Mm-hmm. Um, and when I first came mm-hmm. here, I think we might have came here around yeah. the same time. I've been here um, around 10 years. All right, me yeah. too. I yeah. got here in uh, 2006. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but around that time, there was one name in Magic okay. here yeah. that kind of controlled everything. Absolutely. Good right. or bad, everybody <laughs> went to that show, and good or bad, yeah. they raved about it. And that's and, the exact reason why I did not want to come to Branson. Yeah. Because there was already a magician here, not because of the person or anything. It just, mm-hmm. I, I kind of had a dream of going to a town where I could be the big magic guy. Yeah. And I thought, there's already a magician in Branson, so I don't want to go there, but I ended up here. Yeah. yeah. Not just a magician, yeah. but it, I mean, that huge fan club. Yeah. All the and yeah. a following yeah. and quite a production and yeah. stuff like that. And when I came here, I was working with uh, Sean Begonia. Okay. Um, yeah to develop a routine for myself. Mm-hmm. And he mentioned to me, oh yeah, this are you really mm-hmm. working there? How's that going with mm-hmm. this other guy? You know, yeah. cause he kind of has a monopoly on it. Yeah. But, but it's changed a lot over the last few years. It has now. totally changed cause now there's magic everywhere you look. Pretty know? much. Yeah. And there's even uh, in the variety shows, they right. have that in there's there. There's magic, yeah. Uh-huh. There's magic in the air. <laughs> yeah. Is that what I smell? You know, I try to tell a lot of magicians to, whatever you do, don't come to Branson. Mm-hmm. And they may think, oh, the guy's jealous. He doesn't want the competition. But I'm just telling them, you know, the truth. 
You yeah. know, don't come here unless you want to starve to death. Yeah. <laughs> well, I give you a lot of credit because uh, I was asked a few years ago to do my own show. Yeah. I had somebody that asked me about going to a theater and doing my own show, mm -hmm. and I said, no way. Yeah. Because you have to appeal to an audience that wants to watch a magic show, yeah. where being part of a variety show is what I like. Because yeah. people come, they might like the music, they might enjoy me, but you're not, right. you're not, uh, you and know. And then you don't have all the pressure of having to deal with all the, you know, the, there's a lot of stress that comes with having your own show. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the good gig because you got a paycheck and you go out, you got your built-in crowd that somebody else is spending the money on promoting. Right. Because you're with Silver Dollar City, right? They own your company, right? Yeah. They have like, as you know, amazing marketing. So you got these wonderful crowds. Mm -hmm. So every day when you go out, it's like rock star. You know, you got your big crowds, you, you rock them, you leave. And like guys like me that's self-producing, it is, it is a curse. It's, it's not just a <laughs> blessing, but it's kind of a curse because you, you have to get your audience. You have to pay for your marketing. You have to do mm -hmm. everything. And it's yeah. I want to talk to you all about that and what you're doing this year in Branson. Okay. And uh, you've basically toured all of Branson in yes. the 10 I, years that I've been here. Yeah, I've been on a tour. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to talk about that in just a minute and okay. find out what's going on for 2015 and 2016. All right. This is Christopher James with Taylor Reed. Thank you for supporting All Things Branson. Be sure to subscribe and stay in touch on Facebook and Twitter. Hi, this is Christopher James here with All Things Branson, and we're here with Taylor Reed at the beautiful uh, Mr. Gilberti's. Gilberti's, yeah. Out here. And they I'm have amazing have pizza here. They do. Do they yeah. have pizza? Oh, awesome. They do have pizza. Yeah. Spaghetti and all kinds <laughs> yeah. of things. Yeah. But I want to talk about uh, your experience here in Branson now. Yes. Now, 2015, you're starting to do your show again. Right on. Uh, during the Christmas season, mm -hmm. mainly. Fall, Christmas. Yeah. But in 2016, you're going to be with Jim Stafford mm -hmm. at his theater. Now, yeah. I was telling you, uh, making a joke, that you've basically been everywhere. Yeah, I've been on a little tour here. Mm -hmm. You started out, the first time I saw you were at, uh, what do they call that, the Branson? Well, it was called the Branson Hall of Fame Theater or something. Hall of Fame Theater. And uh, then I saw you a couple other places, but then you yeah. ended up at another magician's old uh, theater. Yeah, yeah they, it, was, um, it was a magical castle at one time, and then they changed it to call, they called it the uh, Masters of Magic. Mm -hmm. When I was there, it was called the Masters of Magic. So, yeah. yeah, but that must have been completely different for you, because you had to yeah. run the whole place, right? Yeah, it was, it was actually kind of nice, because I had some big money guys behind me there. Oh, well, there you so go. So that was nice. The yeah. only thing that wasn't nice is the night that we opened the show, they had painted over the other guy's face, yeah. with I think white or black paint or something and they forgot when they turn on the neon that his face was going to come back through the uh, white paint uh -huh. and so even though I was appearing there it, it was, was funny else. so yeah. we made some jokes about it on the stage it was just kind of a but he didn't think it was funny I don't think he did I think he put a billboard across the street from me saying something kind of funny as well. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. competitive and stupid in this business. You know what? We actually posted that picture because not only was there one, there was like three of them right leading on. down to that theater Yeah, and it's stuff. like, you know, I have moved down the road here. Mm -hmm. And then he said, often imitated, never duplicated. That's a part that was stupid. Yeah, right. Because I've been right. doing magic since I was four years old. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm not trying to duplicate a cat act, that's for sure. No, it was completely you know? different. But however, I have been friendly with this guy on and off over the years, so I don't want to sound like I'm his enemy. I mean, he's been nice to me. I've been nice to him. But however, I just think some of this stuff is child's play. Yeah. Well, you know? I, going into that theater, though, I mean, yeah. you, didn't help, you couldn't help but deal with yeah. that. Well, you know because... what really happened that year? Is I had performed two years in a row at the Music City Center with the, uh, Doug Gabriel. Oh, yeah. So Doug Gabriel's a, a singer, entertainer. Yeah, he's been on the show. He's a friend, friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, the manager of the theater because the owner of the theater, I think, lives in Phoenix or L.A. or somewhere. And so Doug was managing Music City Center, and I was the afternoon show at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And Doug and I got along really well because I was a magic act, and he's a singing act, and we could cross-promote each other's act with no competition. It was right. wonderful. You could come see my show, go see Doug tonight to win-win. So uh, Doug and I worked there for a couple of years, and then this other magician had an investor come by the place and basically yank the carpet out from under us. Ah, uh, yeah. So about 20 shows lost their gigs there, everybody, from Joey Riley to church shows to the Comets and beyond. I remember and that. Me, it was kind of shuttered for a little so, while. So when I went home, everything. my wife said, you seem like you're in a pretty good mood. Why are you such in a good mood? You just loaded out of a theater. And I'm like, oh, it's just off to the next gig. Mm -hmm. And you know how we have to be as an entertainers, right? You can't get depressed. Just move mm -hmm. forward. Well, you're not supposed to. I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> and so she said, well, why don't you go get that guy's theater since he just got your theater? Uh huh. I mean, there's your competitive edge there. So I went and got his theater, actually. Yeah. And it became a really big deal in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. Because it I was remember. saying, you know, it's very off, uh, very common for entertainers to swap 
places or do the Branson the shuffle. The Branson shuffle, they call it. But yeah. the magicians just took a shuffle. He took my theater, I took his. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I got the better deal because the, the, the producers were mad at him. So they gave me 20 billboards. Yeah. I think they did that to make him mad. It yeah, was, yeah. But I so, love that theater, by the it's way. It's a wonderful I thought it was theater. really yeah. cool for magic. It's a great theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. but Kind of a bad location, though. <laughs> it is. And I always said that. that I, I always tell the joke that uh, when we talk about that theater, that the very first time I came into Branson, I'd never heard of Branson, Missouri before. Right. I'm driving down. I end up with one of the maps with all the colored routes. Mm-hmm. I'm so lost. And I end up at that theater mm-hmm. trying to figure out where I am. Right. And I have to go in and ask for directions. And mm-hmm. I say, I'm a new magician in town. And they all looked at me. And now I know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was the very first place that I pulled in in town yeah. and went to. The only thing good about off. that theater mainly is that it's been a kind of a magic theater on and off for about 20 something years. So mm-hmm. when people come to town, I think they're semi programmed to drive over there and see what's going on. Yeah. And it's closed down now for a couple of years. Yeah, but I loved yeah, how it looked. It was a wonderful perfect. theater. It yeah. was perfect. So you left there, and then you, uh, I know you, you sell a lot of magic yeah. online. You yeah. develop your magic and stuff. But you're setting up, uh, you started at the Jim Stafford Theater. Yes, we started about uh, three or four weeks ago at Jim Stafford's Theater. We're mm-hmm. doing an afternoon show at 2 o'clock, Fridays and Saturdays only for the rest of the year. Because uh, as you know, this is the slower time of the year for families, at least. You right, know? right. And my show is primarily a family show, children mm-hmm. and adults. Yeah, except I for think all the swearing. It's huh? terrible. You're yeah, swearing. <laughs> there's a lot of cussing and drinking in our show, but other than that, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But however, uh, you know, our show is really wonderful for older people, but uh, the perception to older women is they don't think they like magic. The old men are like, I love magic, yeah, you know, because they remember, you know, kid, but yeah. then the old ladies like, I don't want to go watch a guy with a bird. They think of a guy with a bird and a tux, uh-huh, or a rabbit. But once yeah. they come, they're like, this is nothing like what I thought it was going to be. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. What's a it. stereotype that you, you just hate <laughs> about magic? Well, I think that's one of them is that the yeah. older women think that it's just going to be a hokey little magic show with a bird or a rabbit mm-hmm. when really it's kind of like a little concert with many levels, right? Comedy right, right. and variety and illusions and... But yeah, or that's that's that would be it. The biggest yeah. pet peeve is mine. Are just some of the jokes that I hear constantly. But you yeah. still laugh at them, you know. Make my wife disappear. Can you or, make me thinner? Could you, yeah. Could you take a little weight off me? Yeah. Here? Or my wife can make money disappear. Like I yeah. hear this because I like you. I meet the people after the show. Yeah. And I hear the same ones yeah. all the time. Well, they'll they'll always say, you know, could you take a little bit of this off, the ladies? And I'll say, mm-hmm. hey, I'm a magician, not a surgeon. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> or yeah. yeah, they'll say, can you turn my dollar into a hundred dollar bill? And I say, mm-hmm. yeah, it'll cost you three hundred dollars for yeah. me to do that for you <laughs> you, you know go. you have to come up with little lines little, or you'll go crazy right on but at this theater do you finally have the chance to yeah. to go and and just do your show concentrate on your yeah. show not worry about concessions and yeah restrooms uh, and, i'm at the uh, jim stafford theater now and it's it's nice because they have a wonderful management team over there it's a very classy situation it's mm-hmm. a beautiful theater they remodel it it's been about two million bucks remodeling it and it's right on the lo- uh, on the strip so the location's the best i've ever had i think yeah and i don't have to worry about yeah any of that yeah be ushering or janitor work or any of that they got all (laughs) that covered i've talked to other people that do their own shows in town that's the worst part they say you don't realize that we're out there greeting people afterwards Mm -hmm. and meeting the bus groups and then we go in and clean the toilets and empty the trash and i've had we've we've had those scenarios where my dancers have had to actually go and clean up the bathrooms and stuff it's yeah yeah. Fortunately, we hadn't had to do. We have haven't had to do that in in a long time. Yeah. But it's we've had we had to at one time or another. <laughs> well, it's not do fun. what you have to do, right? <laughs> Change the garbage bags and then yeah. clean up the popcorn and get out of here. You know, so yeah, and then go home and get ready for the next day. <laughs> so welcome to Branson. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing your show in cool. 2016. I think it's going to yeah. be great. You have a great lo- location. Yeah. Next year is going to be a good year for magic. Yeah. Because just like uh, a natural selection in Branson, the the different uh, people that don't really try that hard get weeded out. So yeah. all the good shows end up here. And I know you have a good show because yeah. you've been in Branson for 10 years. Been here so. a long time. I think they say that if you can stay past three years, something's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's... I think one of the claims to my small amount of fame here is the fact that I've been persistently promoting my show. Right. You know, because, I mean, there's so many shows in Branson, what, 150 or some odd shows, that you get lost in this crowd. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, they're not going to know who you are. So uh, you have to get out in their in their face, actually, meet the people and mm-hmm. do Which TV, do. radio, like we're doing now. Yeah. All this stuff helps, uh, you know, because a lot of people, they don't know how to do all that. Right, right. And as you and I know, being here a long time, that... We've already seen a lot of stuff come and go because mm-hmm. they didn't know the right tricks, so to speak. Not yeah. it's not about the tricks on stage or that. 
there's a lot more to it in, yeah. in the business. Even big end. stars that come yeah. here only last a few months. Yeah. Or, you know, think of some of the people, Gallagher, I think Willie Nelson was here, Wayne Newton yeah. was here. All these people you would think would be huge would, successes yeah. here, and they, they moved on. So. Absolutely. Well, good luck next year, Thank and you. good luck the rest of this year here. And go see uh, Taylor Reed at Jim Stafford. Nice. And your website is? TaylorReed.com. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> that's easy. And if you're a magician, go to my uh, usemagicillusions.com. Oh, there you go. That's where I, I need sell. to talk to you about that. I have yeah. a bunch of things to yeah. sell. So I sell I magic to... tricks worldwide that way. Oh, cool so, deal. All right. Well, it was great anybody. talking to you. Thank and you. thanks for watching us. And support Branson. Thank my you. name's Christopher James with Taylor Reed. Bye-bye. Thank you for supporting All Things Branson. Be sure to subscribe and stay in touch on Facebook and Twitter. Check back at allthingsbranson.com for the latest news about Branson, Missouri.